I'm recording this while the weather is looking grim because I was going to record yesterday, but friends came in from planned and all that. I've lived there for nine years and I still don't like it here. Seriously, Thomas Sanders, Ant Dude, how do you live like this again? Wait, Ant Dude is in Florida, right? Hey guys, it's Chris and Hicks, and welcome to this video. Castlevania! Castlevania has quite the history behind it, making its official debut in 1986, over 30 years ago. It was a short game, but the difficulty was enough to make it last a while, and it was a special kind of hard to make you feel it wasn't the game being cheap, even though it kind of was. A year later, they made a sequel called Simon's Quest, and... well, it sucked. It would not be until 1997 when they'd go back to that style with Castlevania Symphony of the Night, heralded as one of the greatest Castlevania games of all time, and manned by the great copycat himself, Koji Iga Igarashi. Yeah, if you think about it, Castlevania 2 was the original Metroidvania, if you will. But you know what was the true original Metroidvania? Metroid. Seriously, Konami just... They pretty much copied Metroid with people claiming it as a new genre, even though it's the same fucking- In 2014, Koji left Konami, good timing given the Kojima fallout, and is now working on a spiritual successor to Symphony of the Night in Bloodstained, Ritual of the Night. Funny story, I thought it was what it called Ritual of the Memoir. I don't know why I thought that. I don't know. Now, I'm sure you remember my previous video on Castlevania Legends for the Game Boy. In all honesty, I did call it my fave Castlevania game, but, to be honest, it was mostly in an underdog mentality because of the fact that it was considered not canon because of female protagonists. Which is still dumb. Anyway, what we're going to talk about is my bigger fave called Castlevania, Aria of Sorrow. Though I will say the Castlevania Legends is still pretty damn enjoyable, let's be real. I'll be doing a new game plus playthrough because I don't have the time to do all the various crafter specific items to get better. The game begins with our main protagonist, Sora Cruz, making his way to a shrine with his friend, Mina, only to suddenly be teleported to Dracula's castle. In an eclipse. I, I, I mean, of course! Where else would this castle be? We then encounter Genya Arikado and- Oh shit, monsters! Did, 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 did we just absorb soul? Yep, that's the main gimmick of this edition of Castlevania. Instead of sub-weapons, you collect the souls of Dracula's minions. There are four types of souls to collect in this game. First, there's the bullet souls, colored red. These souls are similar to sub-weapons where you press up and B to utilize them, varying from disc armor to skeleton bones. The blue souls, labeled guardian souls, are timed souls that are usually used as defensive types and also assist in environment exploring. The yellow ones, named enchanted souls, mostly boost certain stats, affect your status, or potentially prevent certain status conditions like poison or curse from happening. Lastly, are the Grey Souls, labeled Ability Souls. These are unique in that you usually only get one of each kind for things like double jumps. By the way, about Arikado? It's never directly mentioned, but he's Alucard. Boy, he sure does walk slow, almost like as a common thing in this kind of Castlevania game. Not like people would bitch about this under a different name or anything. Oh hey, who are you? Ah yes, this is Graham Jones, a missionary. He seems nice. He totally won't be the bad guy. Spoiler. He's the bad guy. He also mentions the prophecy of 1999, saying that while Dracula was completely destroyed, one would inherit all of Dracula's powers in this current age of 2035. You know, when it actually becomes the year 2035, things will be pretty awkward. I mean, if we actually make it to that, considering the climate change. We soon after encounter someone named Yoko, who does warn us about Graham. Yoko works at a church, and also in this day and age, that's always trustworthy except not. Do you hate me yet? Admittedly, there isn't as much story as one would expect, but at the same time, it explains enough. Either way, the gameplay itself is fun and enjoyable. There's also a military man named Hammer who opens up a shop in this castle. The best part about it? Both Soma and Mina are pretty critical of it, questioning why he'd open a shop in Dracula's castle with only a few humans and tons of evil monsters, as if to say they're breaking the fourth wall a bit. I, I really enjoy that, I don't understand why. And there's Jay. He has amnesia. Pretty important, actually. So important that he makes two appearances total. Three, depending on the circumstances. 
Along the way, we encounter Graham again, and our curiosity gets the better of us. Turns out Graham is an asshole claiming to be Dracula due to being born on the day of Drax's demise. We let Yoko know, and it allows us to become friends or something. Oh, hey, Death. You're an afterthought in this game. Filler boss! You know, there's something I actually don't get in the Castlevania series. This is Death. The embodiment of Death itself. A being of ultimate power. One that you would expect answers to no one, aside from two small children. And yet, this being of ultimate power answers to a being of likely lesser ultimate power in a fucking vampire. I mean, this is the being that decides whether you die or keep living and can just easily kill you by a simple touch of his hand. And yet he answers to a lowly vampire? I get it's Dracula, but still, it's just a vampire. Undead or not, I don't get it. I mean, it's like with the... It's like one world leader that's of a bigger power answering to a lesser world leader and having them... You know what? I don't, I don't know how many more jokes I can make about this. I mean, have you seen current events at all? I'm out. I'm out! I'm checking my mail. By the way, Soma can walk underwater with the help of a soul. Never say anything that breathing on the water, though. Soma has quite a set of lungs on him. A, it's walking mannequins. Oh. Never mind. By the way, for this boss specifically, if you want the soul it has, destroy the four parts of his outer shell first, and then mainly attack the ball inside the... ball. Ah, shit. Aw, oh, man. Now I'll never get laid. These souls are useless as fuck! Actually, Arikado comes by, promising to help Yoko while we go after Graham. And now we got a... giant bat soul? I know just the joke to use for this. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman! I honestly couldn't resist. And funnily enough, Jay comes back, and it just so happens that his memory returned. Turns out that he is the man that ended Dracula in 1999, named Julius Belmont. Honestly, having amnesia for 36 years of your life must be utter torture, especially if you don't have an identity to really use in the meantime like Goku does. Well, looks like Graham got Drax's power. Well, at least he won't transform into a hideous mon- HOLY SHIT, IT'S A HIDEOUS MONSTER! We beat him. Cool. As we beat him, we are then brought back to the shrine, although Soma acts like the castle is still calling out to him. Weird. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Castlevania Array of Sorrow. We're not done here. No. No, really, check the timestamp. Still got some time left. We're not done here. We're not through. See, this game has multiple endings, and to get access to the other two, you have to beat Graham with three specific souls equipped, and only one of them is obtainable as you progress in the story. The souls in question are the Flame Demon, Giant Bat, and Succubus. Upon beating Graham with these souls equipped, we come across a startling revelation. Soma Cruz is Dracula. Holy crap! Is anyone actually surprised by this? I mean, given the fact that Soma has the, quote, power to rule, as some put it, and can control the minions of Dracula via soul absorption to use his powers as his own, it kinda makes sense, actually. If anything, once you put two and two together, this could be as predictable as a certain Arkham Knight spoiler. But I'll probably cover that someday on an unrelated topic. In addition, I recall some sources like Game Informer talking about Lords of Shadow 2, claiming we've never had a game where we play as Dracula in the Castlevania series. Clearly, they haven't done their research, as you can see that R.I. of Sorrow is the first to really do this. Anyway, we're told that we have to go to the heart of the castle in order to stop the flow of Dracula within us. Why not just use birth control? <laughs> Okay, okay, that one was very bad, I'm sorry. Of course, since we're Dracula, we end up having to fight Julius. And it is a pretty epic fight. Seriously, the sword I have equipped is, as far as I know, the strongest one in the game. And it only does 44 hits of damage. The disc armor does more damage, technically, with two hits, of course. And even then, still has a big defense, meaning that you're in for a long and exciting battle. Once you finally beat him, Soma then asks that Julius promises to kill Soma should Dracula's power consume him. And we're in the Chaos Realm, and... Boy, it, uh... It's something. 
It's essentially a small square that consists of specific rooms from throughout the castle, from specific sections, but shaded in gray or something. And if you make a wrong turn, you get an eyesore of... <gasps> SPELL! After making it to the boss battle, Mina and crew communicate with us through magic, and gives us some reassurance to fight chaos itself. The battle consists of two phases. The first phase has the boss stealing your souls, attacking you with them in three certain ways. After getting back all your souls... CHAOS ITSELF ENSUES. It is a giant snake with four eyes, and also a black orb. Not exactly chaotic. Yeah, shit! I died. Well, at least I can just start up the... Wait. Oh my! Yep. They made it so that when you die, you get the worst ending. Not only that, but they had the balls to not only have you be stuck with unskippable credits, but they even include you in the special thanks of it, pretty much saying you did that. You caused Soma to become Dracula and be consumed by evil, you worthless little shit! Of course, we beat Chaos itself, allowing us to turn back to normal and for everyone else to get home. Soma and Mina reminisce of the situation as the eclipse ends. And that is Castlevania Araya of Sorrow. You know, it's kind of obvious this game's good, so it's not going on the sheet. I should really get a title posted for that or something. I mean, it's one of the better entries in the Castlevania series, and I personally enjoyed the Souls mechanic, and the replayability is pretty high. In addition, after getting the best ending, you can actually play as Julius in a relatively classic style for Castlevania, which is definitely pretty good. So, yeah, if you have a Wii U, it's available on that as a part of the Virtual Console service. Or, of course, you can wait for the Switch's Virtual Console service in about four or so years. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, click the like button to show your support, and you can subscribe for more. Click any of the cards and such to check out the videos there and whatnot. You can also check out my social medias in the description below, and please remember to stay awesome. Bye bye